What's going on guys? This is going to be a video on installing OS 10.10 or 10.10.1 Yosemite on your Hackintosh using the Clover bootloader. Now a few weeks back I did a tutorial using the Tony Mac and Chimera method which received both praise and criticism from you guys. Praise because it resulted in a Yosemite installation and it was using a familiar method that most of you guys were familiar with, but a lot of criticism also from those that wanted a more modern approach to the installation. And now really quick what I mean by that, Chimera is what we call a legacy bootloader which has a fair amount of drawbacks. Clover on the other hand is much more modern and handles a lot of things quite differently, but with that comes the cost of a pretty steep learning curve. Right now, at least in my eyes, a big reason for using Clover instead of Chimera is because of iMessage. iMessage right now is actually currently fixable, and as you can see I do indeed have working uh, right down here in my dock. Uh, only using Clover though, at this point in time you cannot do this on the Chimera bootloader, mostly because of the way that Apple has changed their authentication process. Clover also provides a nice clean vanilla installation on the target volume as you could pass all the kernel extension loading to the EFI partition rather than having an extra folder on the root of your installation drive. Now depending on your hardware configuration and or how much work you want to actually put into this, there's two ways that you guys could go about doing this. The first one is to actually go back to my last Yosemite installation video and create a Unibeast installer, get the OS installed, and then do all of your post installation using Clover. Or, for the more hardcore, you could do the full-on Clover method, including a Clover installer and all the Clover post installation. Now there are some hardware configurations out there that this will be a lot more difficult to get working on than others. A lot of you guys that may have a socket 1155 or even 1150 will probably have an easier time with that than people that are kind of like me on the bleeding edge here with my x99 platform. In this video, I'm going to be using the first method to give you guys the best of both worlds. I'll be creating a Unibeast drive and then doing the post installation using Clover. The reason I've chosen this method is because it lets you have your cake and eat it too, so to speak. The Unibeast drive is very easy to create and use, and the post installation of Clover will allow you to get Yosemite up and running with a lot more modern of a bootloader. Now I know when some of you guys hear that, you're probably going to say that it's not the most hardcore or the quote unquote leet way to do it, but my channel has really never been about that. It's never really been the most hardcore way you could get it working. It's always been about achieving a great result without having to bend over backwards to achieve it. Which once again is why I'm going to be keeping this thing as simple as possible by using a combination and getting the best of both worlds. Now if there's enough of you guys out there saying I just don't want to touch Tony Mac, please do a video only about Clover, I may consider it. But at the end of the day, this video is going to get 99% of my viewers up and running with what they need to be up and running. If you're one of those guys that just wants to do it all Clover, then you probably don't really need this video anyway. So with that out of the way, here's what you're going to need to follow this video. You're going to need an 8GB or higher USB drive or partition, a copy of Yosemite which I assume you've already gotten from the Mac App Store as it's absolutely free. You're going to need a copy of Clover and at the time of this video the latest version is 3050. Next up is Clover Configurator which is going to allow you to customize Clover a lot easier than doing it manually. You're also going to need a copy of Unibeast. I will not provide a link to it so simply go to Tony Mac's website, sign up if you're not already and download it. If on an x99 platform like myself, you're going to need a terminal command to patch your kernel. A tool called EFI Mounter version 2 that will mount the system's EFI partition very easily for us. An EFI file called hfsplus.efi which will allow us to boot HFS volumes with Clover. And last but not least, you're going to need some kernel extensions, uh, namely fake SMC, null CPU power management, Voodoo TSC sync. It really depends on your hardware configuration, which or any or all of these that you may need. Me, myself, personally, I'm on a Gigabyte X99 UD4 motherboard with a Core i7-5820K processor. I only need fake SMC and Voodoo TSC sync. However, like I just said, your hardware configuration may differ drastically. I also want to point out really quick that I am in fact using a PCI Ethernet card as well as a USB audio interface so I don't really have to worry about onboard LAN or audio uh, but as far as I do know the chipsets on this motherboard are compatible. I just happen to have these around and well those are plug and play. The first step to our process here is going to be to set up the flash drive or the partition or whatever you're going to use to actually install the operating system. Of course to do that we're going to open up disk utility and when it comes up you're going to find your media on the left here. I'm just using a flash drive as the name implies and what we're going to do here is the same as my last video. We're going to simply do one partition and we need to make sure that in the options here we have master boot record selected. Unfortunately there's a lot of motherboards that have problems with this right now. Some motherboards you can do GUID, there's a lot right now that you can't so just doing it MBR is a kind of safe way for now. So go ahead and hit OK. 
make sure it's OS Extended Journaled, aka HFS, and I'm simply just going to call this UniBeast, and after doing that, we're going to apply the changes. Now that that's been partitioned correctly, I'm going to close out of Disk Utility, and now we're going to run UniBeast. I'm sure by now everyone knows how to use UniBeast, but in case you don't, continue, continue, continue. You read these terms very fast, and you agreed to them, of course. Here, simply highlight your destination volume. If you're like me, you only have one available. If for whatever reason you want to install Lion or Mountain Lion or Mavericks, by all means, go ahead and do that. But however, of course, this video is all about Yosemite. And we're going to click Continue. You can add these if you want. My system does not call for either of these, so I'm just going to hit Continue. Here's a nice little overview. We're going to type in that ridiculously, extremely secure password, as always, per use. Hit OK, and we're going to let Unibeast do its thing. As you can see, our UniBeast drive has been successfully created, and the next thing I'm going to do is patch the kernel. Once again, you only have to do this if you're on an x99 system at this point in time. So in order to do that, I have a little text document here that you guys can download. And you will need to modify this little code here to match the name of your UniBeast drive. For example, mine's called UniBeast. So right here where it says USB, we're going to get rid of that, and I'm simply going to type in UniBeast. Of course, thanks to Stinga11 for this patch information. And from here, it's a simple copy and paste into Terminal. So I'm going to open up Terminal here, paste in the command. It is a sudo command, so of course you need to have a password set on your user account. After hitting enter, it'll take maybe half a second, and you'll be greeted with a whole lot of nothing, which basically means you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this text document. The next thing I'm going to do is copy over the kernel extensions I need to the Unibeast drive. And as I said earlier, the only two that I need are fake SMC and Voodoo TSC Sync. Now because we use UniBeast, FakeSMC is actually already there, so I'm simply just going to copy Voodoo TSC Sync, once again you may need others, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the UniBeast drive. But lo and behold, there's no extra folder. Trust me guys, it's there, it just happens to be hidden. Now in the past, to unhide these files and folders, I've used a variety of methods, such as an application called Show Hidden Files, I've done terminal commands, however I now have a new way that I like to use, and I'll go ahead and show you guys what that is. On the keyboard, you're simply going to do Command Shift G, and that's going to bring up a little Go to the Folder dialog. This right here is exactly the directory that you guys want to go to, slash volumes, slash the name of your UniBeast drive, slash extra, slash extensions. And once we hit go, all this is going to do is open up that folder, which happens to be right here. It's going to look empty, but that's just because everything in there is hidden. Keep in mind, there's fake SMC in there, there's all kinds of goodies in there. So if you really want to, you can unhide the files with a default terminal command, or you could use the show hidden files app. Whatever works for you, as long as you find a way to get your kernel extensions in the extensions folder within the extra folder, you will be golden. And these last two steps here of patching the kernel and copying over these kernel extensions, depending on your system, you may not need to do either of them. Say for example you have a Socket 1155 Ivy Bridge system, you won't need to do either of those steps because you not only do you not need a patched kernel, but you also don't need Voodoo TSC Sync. And with that said, our UniBeast drive is now done and we can proceed with the installation. After rebooting, we're going to proceed as usual with the installation of OS X. Select the UniBeast drive at boot up and enter the appropriate kernel flags for your system. On my x99 system, I only needed NPCI equals 0x2000 to get to the installer. However, of course, keep in mind, your system may require others. You'll then want to enter disk utility and format your destination volume as an OS X extended journaled GUID volume. OS X will then install, and the system will reboot once done. Since we'll be doing our first boot using Chimera and not Clover, we will need to copy over the patched kernel that we modified on the UniBeast drive earlier. To do this, boot back into the UniBeast installer, and this time, instead of disk utility, open up terminal. The terminal command on screen will be in the video description for your convenience. The big thing to take note of here is to replace the USB and Yosemite installation names in that command with the real names of your partitions. Once the terminal command has been successfully executed, you can boot into the new installation using your UniBeast drive. After the initial setup, we're finally ready for the Clover installation. Now that we're booted into our new Yosemite installation with our UniBeast drive, we're ready to install Clover. So we're going to do that by simply running the little Clover PKG file here. As usual, we're going to continue to agree to all the fun licensing terms. Now in most cases, you will not have to change the install location. If you're following this video exactly, then you won't have to. But I know some of you guys maybe want to do this on a separate hard drive and you're currently booted into another hard drive. If you do things like that, then you will have to change the install location. But like I said, if you're following this video, then there's no need to. However, what you will need to do is to come over here and do Customize. 
You want to make sure that the first two checkboxes are selected. Install for UEFI booting only and install Clover in the ESP, the EFI system partition. This is absolutely critical for this tutorial. Otherwise, you're simply going to install the legacy version of this and you're not going to see a lot of the benefits. Now, if you want to install some other themes, you're more than welcome to. There's a lot here. There's a lot on Google. I'm sure you can find them. Uh, themes, kind of a low priority right now. We just kind of want to get this thing booting. So I'll go ahead and ignore that for now. Now, the other very important area is this driver's 64 UEFI dropdown. For my particular system, these are the two right here that I need to have checked. This ME variable UEFI 64 and the OS 10 Aptio Fix DRV 64. I've tried many different configurations of this on my particular motherboard, and the only way I could get it to boot is if I select these two and only these two. Your motherboard, your hardware may be completely different. You may have to install the first four, or you know, skip one, or you know, you may have to install all of them. So unfortunately, this is a part where I really can't help you guys. This is just going to be a lot of trial and error. But if you're on an X99 platform, or maybe you even have the same exact motherboard that I do, this is going to be a good place to start. Otherwise, I'm sure there's other guides out there for your specific motherboard that may have some more specific settings of what you may need to check. So once you have those selected, we're simply going to click install, put in our extremely secure password, and let the install be on its way. Once Clover is finished installing, you can simply close it, and now we need to do some things on the EFI partition. But first, we need to mount the EFI partition. So what we can do is open up our handy EFI mounter tool, put in that extremely secure password, and you need to know which disk that you're actually on right now. Now, I would say nine times out of 10, it will be disk zero. But a quick way that you can find out is to open up a terminal window and do a quick disk util list. And now you're gonna look for the disk that has the name that you named your new installation drive. So for example, mine right here is Macintosh SSD. For me, as predicted, this is going to be disk zero. However, this could very easily be disk one or disk two or disk a million, however many hard drives you tend to have in your computer. But as I said, mine is in fact disk zero. So what we're going to be doing is mounting this partition right here and modifying a few files on it. So since this is disk zero, we want to mount the EFI partition on disk zero, which is going to be disk zero S1 as seen here. So we're going to simply click OK and then mount. And there we go. So we can go ahead and close out a terminal. And now you're going to browse to EFI, Clover, Driver64 UEFI. And currently, my file is not here, but you will have a file called vboxhfx64.efi. You're going to want to delete that file and instead replace it with the hfsplus.efi in the download. So you're going to come over here, go to Others hfsplus.efi and you're going to paste it right here in EFI, EFI, Clover, Driver64, UEFI. And now with the specific settings that I've chosen, this is what I have in that folder and this is all done for me. And now what's left is to open Clover Configurator and to customize your config.plist. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to Spotlight and we're going to type Clover. Clover Configurator comes right up. And here we are. Now before you go ahead and do anything farther, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually referencing the config.plist on the EFI partition. So we're going to come up here to File, Import Configuration, and we're going to browse to EFI. You should only have one mounted, EFI, Clover, config.plist, and we're going to import that. Now much like before with the checklist when installing the bootloader, this is a part that I probably cannot help you out with very much in this video unless you have the same hardware that I do. A lot of these settings can be left alone, but like I said, every hardware configuration is different, but I'm willing to bet that the place that you'll spend most of your time is right here in your boot options, and it's probably going to be messing with these boot arguments here. The boot options I currently use are kex dev mode equals one, which allows unsigned kernel extensions in the EFI partition to be executed, such as fake SMC, null CPU power management, kex like that, slide equals zero, as well as NPCI equals zero X 2000. Lucky for me, these are the only ones that I need, but your system, like I said earlier and a thousand times prior, may require some more. You can also do a ton of cool things with Clover Configurator. For example, you could set your default boot volume so that it just automatically boots. If you come up here to ACPI, you can make sure that you're generating your C and your P states. 
If you have a card that requires it, you can come over here to graphics and manually inject different drivers such as Nvidia, ATI, or Intel. You can even customize your SM BIOS, which I do recommend doing, and really isn't all that hard. You can come over here and click the little wand. You can select various models of Macs, say for example a Mac Pro. You can come down here to a 6.1, which is the latest generation. And using these little shake tools here, you can go ahead and just generate a serial number, things like that. Clover Configurator does wonders with things like this. But like I said, a lot of this stuff is simply cosmetic, not all that important. And I'm willing to bet that you'll spend most of your time in the boot menu here. And once you've ticked all the boxes that you want to tick and done all the things that you want to do, you can simply come up here to File, Export Configuration, and that'll save it right to that EFI partition, which means that your config.plist is all done. And now we do have one last thing to do here, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of Clover Configurator. And what I'm going to do is open up that EFI partition once again, and I'm going to navigate to EFI, Clover, Kexts, 10.10, and here you're going to have to place any kernel extensions that you want to have loaded on boot up. As I said, I have fake SMC and Voodoo TSC sync. Now is the time that you'd want to copy them to this directory. And after doing so, you're free to reboot the computer and try to boot it up with UEFI. Before doing so, I do want to point out that you can now boot this partition both ways. You can continue to use the Unibeast drive, or you can boot into it with the UEFI method using Clover. If you've never tried to use Clover before, then this is actually a really great thing because there's often times that you'll try to do something in Clover and it simply doesn't work. But since you can boot back up using Unibeast, you can go in, change some settings back around and give it another try. So with that said, let's go ahead and reboot the computer and see what happens. Here we are booting up and before too long, we're brought to the UEFI Clover menu. This menu is applying the kernel flags and other settings that we applied to our config.plist file with Clover Configurator. Assuming you've copied all the right files and ticked all the right boxes, OS X will boot up using the UEFI Clover bootloader and you will have successfully installed OS X Yosemite with Clover. From here, you can experiment with getting additional features working such as handoff, iMessage, and even more. Just a heads up, I will have an iMessage fix video coming to my channel in the very near future. In the meantime, feel free to leave a comment and a like if you found the video helpful. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoadsTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon for a lot more OS X Yosemite and X99 content.